Hello, Flop Turn River. This is Ellipses Jeff uh, coming to you. Uh, re this is my eight-dollar rebuy, uh, second-place finish. Um, I actually went second place in this thing two days in a row, and then the third day I got fifth. Uh, so it was a really nice run. I actually had a really good run here in, in the November of uh, seven final, uh, six final tables and seven playing days. So that w it was a lot of fun, um, and I believe this tournament is the one. The first tournament I played was the one that I played the best in. Um, you're going to see a lot of good plays uh, near the end, uh, so we get to see a lot of a lot of different things going on. Uh, so we can start this off. Let's see. I'm not really too familiar with this poker tracker uh, replayer, but we'll give it a whirl. Uh, I've I already I've probably recorded this first part three times. This is my third time now, so I kind of know what these hands are doing. Uh, I've already got like the second half deleted, but I, I'm really uh, really messed up <laughs> in the first couple times I did this. So we're gonna spike this together. So I do have some uh, bonus coverage in case uh, I'm playing a couple other tournaments here. I am playing a twenty dollar twenty K guaranteed on stars as well as the one oh nine uh fifteen K guaranteed on stars uh that started at uh, one eastern er sorry, noon and one eastern uh accordingly. Uh don't know why this is yet to be playing, but don't think I paused it. Let's see here. Why is this not playing? You got autoplay hands. So, um, maybe uh, uh, does it turn off when I stop? When I, when I cl uh, uh, click off the screen? Uh, maybe it does. That would be really annoying if that was the case. So, uh, regardless, uh, this first uh, 15 minutes or so, I'm really going to know what hands are coming. The way I play the rebuy hour is going to be fairly, fairly tight, fairly standard. Um, it's not anything too different or anything, but uh, I'll give it a whirl. As you can see, I'm just going to leave 60 out here. Uh, no big deal. I limped the jack and sit under the gun. There's really nothing you could do to go wrong in, in the first hour of the rebuy period. That's why I like playing it as my, one of my first tournaments of the day. You really can do whatever you want, and no one's really going to mess with you. I usually like the uh, all in fold, uh, all in fold line in most of my hands. Free five on us to get a decent sized stack. And then I'll start shoving more. Um, I'm sorry. Then I'll then I'll start raising more. If I get short stack towards the end of the first hour, I'm going to be gambling a lot. Until then, I'm not going to be gambling too much. I mean, I'm going to be shoving my premiums. I'm going to be shoving my you know my mid to high pocket pairs and all that jazz. But outside of that, I'm not going to be doing uh, too much gambling. Unless I see, you know, a, a place where I'm going to have a lot of equity against a loose player, which you're going to see from this guy here uh, in a little bit, he's going to be very loose aggressive, and he's going to be the one solely responsible for giving me my entire chips by the end of this first hour. I was fortunate. Uh, I like to have around 10,000 chips at the end of the first hour. If I have that, then I feel very comfortable with how I'm going to play. It's not necessary. Uh, I've gone deep in madness multiple times. Ten dollar rebuy, which you call madness, uh, multiple times with only a ten dollar. I'm sorry, with only the minimum minimum stack. Uh, Three thousand chips at the end of the first hour. Five thousand after the add-on. Uh, so it's not necessary, but it really helps out a lot more if you can get a decent sized stack. Some players really buy their stack, and they're going to be, you know, shoving all in and just letting the you know, odds work in their favor, turn around, they're just going to keep gambling until they get their stack. Uh, I'm not really one for that, 
but you can if you uh, want to. I'm not a big uh, proponent of that. I got some bonus coverage here. First hour, a stack offsuit. I'm going to go ahead and raise it up 150. Got a couple lumpers here. We're going to isolate it. Uh, I don't mind. See, we're getting a monster pot here. You could have limped behind if you wanted to, but you know that's how I. It's how a good way to accumulate chips is to raise the limpers, and it's four way. I got a gut shot, but if it was three way, I probably would have bet this. But there's no way I'm going to be able to bet this uh, four way. So it's unfortunate that I'm going to have to let this go. Uh, but then again, I told him he got chat, so we'll go back. So we get pocket sixes here, and we're just going to go ahead and cold call for set value against this, against this guy here. Uh, at this point, I'm still not willing to gamble too much um, for my stack until I get a decent hold on this table, I would have won this hand. Uh, this is, I think this was before I realized that Lokern was a complete retard. And I think after I saw him calling the 600 all-in with the 9 high was when I decided, you know, it's time for me to gamble. And it's time for me to really wake up and decide that this guy's got, you know, he's going to be gambling with me, I'm going to gamble with him. I got no problem with it. So even though he's got a nice stack right now, 10,000 chips, he's not going to stop. As long as he's not going to stop, I'm not going to stop. It's unfortunate when you see a guy who gambled a lot get a lot of chips because he's in a, most of he's going to stop gambling. You know, it's okay if he gets chips. We'll wait, you know, give him four to five minutes. Give me a chance to catch a hand, you know. All right, we need another some bonus coverage here. This is in the 2020. Uh, I got pocket tens. Got about five M. They're going to be going in uh, no matter what. Uh, just going to go ahead and ship. I got more bonus coverage here. I got the ace queen raise in early position. Get re raised. I'm not going to be playing this hand against a re raise out of position. Just going to go ahead and fold it. I'm up against ace five, 70 30, and it looks like we hold. I double up. Uh, it's 3,000 starting chip stack on the 2020, but it, it's. There's really not much I can do when you lose big hands. Look at this very next hand. He's king suited. I might just overshove this guy, uh, one of these guys again if I think they're going to be paying me off. I got you can see the the the, the poker ace HUD stats, a four four x raise shove. I could raise to 18 uh, with a thousand behind, but I'm just going to open shove. I'm not going to double up again. If he's going to call me off, he'll call me off with ace queen. He might call me off. With he might call me off with eights, but he called me off with queen high, and you know that's exactly the reason why I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and make a note on this guy that he's going to call all in lightly um, after four x raising. Raising in hijack uh, without odds and put in his hand. And just like that, we have we went from 5M to 20 in two hands. Just like that. Very patient. All right, we can go back to these hands here. Ten nine offsuit will complete, but we're not going to be doing too much else with it. And we're just going to be uh, playing tight, uh, looking to get it in with value. Uh, sometimes value is king high, sometimes it's a pocket pair. 
eight seven suited is not usually a hand I'm gonna be open shoving with unless I'm short stack. If I get down below you know, if I if I lose if I get down below like two thousand chips, I'm just gonna be looking to get it in. Just like this hand here, I get pocket tens. I'm just gonna open shove. I'm not gonna mess up. I probably open shove eights are better here. I probably call sevens for set value. But we get 